Hello everyone and welcome again to another video. Um, this time I'd like to talk about uh, taking photographs without actually touching your camera. It may sound a bit strange, but there's good reason to. When we use digital cameras, we have the luxury of things like an infrared remote or cable release uh, with an electronic switch. But what happens when we use vintage cameras with film? Is there an option for us? Let's take a look. So why might you like to take a photograph without touching your camera? Well, under normal circumstances, with plenty of light, our shutter speeds tend to be very quick, a fraction of a second. But at night time, uh, with less light around, we often need to open up the shutter for a much longer time. All very well, providing that there is no movement in the camera, because any movement in the camera is going to uh, translate to the photograph, uh, blurring the shot uh, and possibly ruining the effect that you're looking to get. So what we can do with digital cameras, such as this Olympus E5, is use a remote control. All right, so normally I would take a photograph by pressing the shutter button, and as you can hear, it takes a photograph. But by pressing that button, I may well have nudged the camera and ruin the shot. Now, a lot of modern digital cameras have a feature known as image stabilization, but that doesn't always work too well if the movement is too great and it can introduce other issues. So what we can do is use something like a remote control here. So this is a very simple, very cheap uh, infrared remote control. So if I push the camera back a little bit, just so I can get both in shot, and then I point this at the camera and press the button, we get uh, the shot without having to touch the camera at all. It's locked off on a tripod and the image is nice and stable. So what can we do when the camera is a vintage film uh, camera? I've got here um, my Kodak 620 Duo, which you may well remember from um, a previous uh, set of videos of mine. Um, this obviously is, is quite an old camera, it's 1938, um, but the mechanism hasn't changed an awful lot. So let me explain. If I just open up the camera here, on the side of the lens here, we have a small hole with a thread on the inside. That is the remote shutter release. So under normal circumstances, um, what I would have done with this camera um, is I would have uh, primed the shutter first of all by pulling this lever back till it clicks. And then when I press the shutter button, okay, it fires the, the, the shutter. Um, so with the receptacle for the remote shutter, um, what happens, what needs to happen rather, is that a um, pin is pushed into this hole and that will take place of the pressing of the shutter button. So what we use uh, instead of shoving a dirty great pin into this hole is one of these. This is a manual cable release or cable shutter release purchased from the likes of Amazon, eBay, etc. fairly easily. Basically the way it works is we have at this end we have a plunger which obviously I can press to trigger the shutter. Um, it also has a little locking wheel so if it's a very long exposure rather than me having to stand next to the camera and, and hold this in for, for the entirety I can push it in, twist the little locking wheel uh, and it locks the, the uh, pin in position and obviously it can be released again once I'm ready to release it. At the other end then is a little beveled threaded uh, attachment, if you like. And as you can see, when I press the, um, the plunger, uh, a needle is inserted into that receptacle that I showed you. So let's have a look at it in action. Okay, so that's going to go into the hole here. Sorry, just grab hold of the camera. And I'm just gonna twist until it engages. I still need to prime the shutter, but now when I press the plunger, it does exactly the same job. Now, as I say, that camera was from 1938, but even on more modern film cameras, the design of this uh, shutter release has not actually changed. Um, here's two cameras um, that I use quite a lot and they will be featured uh, in more detail in up and coming videos. But as you can see on this one here, um, we have the shutter release on the side of the lens 
and on the Practica, which is dated from 1985, so relatively recently, um, it's actually in the shutter button itself. Now you'll notice that some of them are different sizes and that is why we have a, a tapered end on the cable release so that it will fit all different types. Not all cameras have them, but uh, it really, you know, the majority of cameras do uh, and this is why it's useful. There are a selection of images that I have taken with various cameras, various lenses, but all with an exposure of at least one second, but often much, much longer, and all using some kind of remote release. That's it. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you learned something. Please, as always, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, like and share the video, and also check out my new website, which you may have seen the links for. I'll leave a link in the uh, description below. Uh, other than that, see you next time.